Hey guys! I may not be able to answer every question, but I do try to read all of them. Your suggestions are what I use to create new videos, so please keep them coming. We're all familiar with apple cider vinegar. YouTube is filled with tons of videos and tutorials on how to use it for your hair, skin, and internal health. So I figured it will be helpful to show you exactly what makes apple cider vinegar so special and how it works to clean your hair. Alright, apple cider vinegar has way too many benefits for me to cover in just one video. So I'm going to stay in my lane and stick with hair. When it comes to hair, what makes apple cider vinegar so special is its acetic acid content and its low pH level. You ever wonder just how apple cider vinegar is able to refresh in your scalp and remove buildup so well? Or why some people swear by doing an ACV rinse after washing their hair? Well, when it comes to hair care, apple cider vinegar should definitely be on the list of one of nature's gifts. So how does apple cider vinegar clean your scalp? According to the USDA, apple cider vinegar has no measurable vitamins, minerals, or any other nutritional elements. Apple cider vinegar's main cleansing powers is in its acetic acid content. Acetic acid is a pure acid with extreme antibacterial and antifungal properties. It's what gives vinegar of all types its sour taste, smell, and low acidic pH. Acetic acid cleans your scalp by literally eating through and dissolving dirt particles. It does all this without having to disturb your scalp's natural acidic environment, leaving your acid mantle intact. Below is a link to a video titled, The Science of Sebum, that goes over what an acid mantle is and why it's so important. Another impressive quality of acetic acid is its ability to kill bacteria by penetrating the cell's membrane and causing it to release its protons and die. So apple cider vinegar will get rid of potentially harmful bacteria from your scalp without stripping your hair of its oils. Here's a clearer way of seeing what I'm talking about. All three of these beakers have olive oil in them. I'm mixing water in the first beaker, apple cider vinegar in the second, and shampoo in the third. Let's take a closer look at what's going on. We all know water and oil don't mix, so we see clear uninterrupted oil sitting on top of the water. With the apple cider vinegar and oil mix, we see a separation but the oil is a lot cloudier and interrupted. And with the shampoo and oil mix, the oil is completely interrupted. This example is meant to show you that while apple cider vinegar won't remove the oils from your hair like shampoo will, due to its acetic pH, it will help break up the oils so it can move and coat your hair more easily. Apple cider vinegar has a strong pungent smell to it. So in between washes, I use the pH stabilizing spritz instead, which has a pH of about four. I use it on my scalp to help break up the built up oil so I can move it down the length of my hair more easily. Apple cider vinegar's powers don't just stop there. It also benefits your hair strands. Due to its acetic pH, Apple cider vinegar helps tighten or close the cuticle layers of your hair. The shampoo process lifts your cuticles, causing your hair to be rough, dry, and tangle easily. Amongst other benefits, a conditioner is supposed to have an acetic pH, so it can tighten your cuticles back up and leave your hair shiny and more manageable. But most conditioners out there don't do a really good job at this. So after a conditioner is rinsed out, an apple cider vinegar rinse is used to ensure your cuticles are nice and flat. Rule of thumb, if you're within the safe zone, anything with an acetic pH 
will tighten your cuticles and anything closer to an alkali pH in this neutral area will relax or slightly lift your cuticle layers. So acid tightens, alkali lifts. Acid tightens, alkali lifts. As you can see, with a pH of two, apple cider vinegar is not within the safe zone because it's too acetic. So in order to use it on your hair and scalp, you should neutralize or increase its pH to an area within the safe zone. Apple cider vinegar has a pH of about two and distilled water has a pH of about seven, sometimes six. When you mix them together, you'll fall somewhere between the two. There are different measurements on YouTube. Mine may be a little different because I based it strictly on pH. If you want to use apple cider vinegar a few times a year, to revive your hair or to get rid of mineral deposits from hard water, you can get away with increasing the pH to just a three. To achieve a pH of three, mix one ounce of apple cider vinegar to seven ounces of distilled water. But if you plan on using apple cider vinegar more often, it's best to increase the pH to about a four because using something that's too acetic too often will eventually eat away at your hair's cuticles. Remember, one move on the pH scale is not a one unit change. It's a 10 times unit change. So a pH of three is a lot different than a pH of four, especially to your hair strands. To achieve a pH of four, mix one teaspoon of apple cider vinegar with eight ounces of distilled water. The pH stabilizing spritz has a pH of four. So that's what I use when I want to move sebum from my scalp to my hair strands, or refreshing my scalp after the gym, or when I feel my cuticles need to be tightened after a wash. It has additional herbal and moisturizing benefits, so it's a bonus. I try to come up with questions you may be having. I hope they're helpful. Follow me on Instagram for up-to-date information on hair care topics. My handle is at Green Beauty Channel. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.